All right, uh, welcome everyone uh, to IEEE APMTT EMC uh, webinar. Uh, so this is our series number six. So today we have uh, we have uh, expert from uh, from from the Netherlands. Uh, his name is uh, Associate Professor Andres Alejon Glazunov. I hope I pronounce your name correctly. <laughs> Perfectly. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you very much. And then, uh, uh, actually, we met uh, uh, last time in in ISAP conference in 2019. Yeah. But I I know I know this guy quite long time ago because uh, during my study, I always refer to his paper, Andy, uh, with your paper entitled, uh, if I can remember correctly, this mean effective gain of antennas in a wireless channel. So it's, it's a very mm -hmm. popular paper. You collaborated with uh, Molish, uh, Andy Molish, and then your your prob probably your supervisor uh, Tuvesen. I can't remember his name. Uh, that that paper. So uh, thank you very much, Andy, for accepting our invitation. And then we are very glad to have you uh, today. And before we start, uh, I would like to introduce your or read your biography. Uh, Andres uh, received the MSc. Uh, in physical engineering from Peter the Great, St. Petersburg, Polytechnic University, uh, St. Petersburg, Russia, in 1994, and a PhD in electrical engineering from Lund University, uh, Sweden, in 2009, and docent habilitation qualification in antenna system from Chalmers University of Technology, Gothenburg, Sweden, in 2017. Uh, he held very research and specialist position in telecom industry like Ericsson, Telia Research and Telia Sonera in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, he was the Swedish delegate to the European Cost Action and from 2018 to 2020, he was the Dutch delegate to the European Cost Action, Iracon. So he has been one of the pioneers in producing the first standardized OTA measurement techniques for 3GPP, and devising novel uh, OTA techniques, for example, in the random line of sight and the hybrid antenna characterization techniques. So, um, well, a lot of uh, work uh, he has been uh, with uh, UK and, and others. Maybe I, I try to cut short a bit. Uh, he's actually an associate professor with the Department of Electrical Engineering, University of Twente, and shape the Netherlands where he is the leading uh, in the antenna system propagation and OTA research. He is also an affiliate associate professor with the Chalmers University of Technology, Gothenburg, Sweden, where he is leading the OTA characterization of antenna system research area. So he has authored more than 150 scientific and technical publications, co-author of uh, this channel modeling books from Wiley, and then his research interests include uh, but not limited to millimeter wave array antenna design, MIMO antenna system, electromagnetic theory, fundamental limitation on antenna channel interactions, radio propagation channel, and many others. Uh, very interesting topics. So please, Andres, um, the webinar is yours. We have around 45 minutes, something like that, and then we will have a QA session afterwards. Thank you very much, sir. So enjoy. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Zremi, for inviting me to this uh, webinar. I'm really honored to, to, to present uh, part of my research, uh, as uh, you mentioned. And uh, the title of my presentation is Antenna Systems Propagation Channels OTD and Wireless Performance of Buildings. Uh, I'm presenting research that I've been done by myself or in collaboration with uh, uh, both uh, the students and uh, collaborators and uh, also in industry as well as in academia. And you might think that, okay, why is uh, this a very long title and so many things? Well, uh, could be good, could be bad, but my idea is that uh, uh, it is really important to combine uh, different aspects uh, uh, of uh, wireless communication systems, uh, especially nowadays that you see that uh, there's a lot of uh, much deeper integration in the design of uh, RF systems uh, as such for uh, MIMO, massive MIMO antennas phase and raised. And also uh, nowadays, um, propagation or wireless communications 
uh, they are not only concerned with the with the channel itself, but uh, actually the performance of antennas and uh, and the use of uh, uh, manipulation of the materials uh, of uh, of uh, buildings and uh, different structures in order to enhance the propagation. Uh, also, since you have a lot of uh, antenna systems. Uh, very large with many components, it becomes very difficult to, to, to test uh, uh, all these antennas uh, in high volumes at the uh, component level. So you need to look into the performance, uh, 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 system performance figure of merit. And for that, you need to define uh, this kind of figure of merit based on, uh, on the desired uh, specific applications. So my idea is to first give you a this is a quite uh, high level presentation. I will not uh, I will just give you some uh, some things that I've been working on and um, also also some research questions that we are working on and the research topics. Uh, and I would like to to start with uh, presenting my affiliation. So uh, as uh, presented by Professor Lee. Uh, I am at the University of, of, uh, of Twente, uh, and uh, this is uh, located in the, in the Netherlands, actually in the, in the eastern part of the uh, Netherlands, uh, northeastern part of the Netherlands, and it's very close to, to Germany. And uh, the University of Twente uh, is, in, is uh, one of the four uh, technical universities in, in, the, in the Netherlands. I have been here since 2018. So a little bit about the organization of the university. We have uh, uh, mainly five uh, uh, faculties and across them, the three different institutes are run. Uh, uh, and the, I belong to the electrical engineering, mathematics and computer science uh, uh, faculty. Uh, within the electrical engineering department, uh, which belong to the to the EMC uh, faculty, uh, there are many um, research groups uh, with uh, different focus. We have the biomedical applications with the focus on electrical and electronic applications and devices. Uh, we have microsystems uh, that uh, the focus is to make uh, things smaller, miniaturization, uh, mechatronics, which is uh, of course very important uh, to take control over different uh, uh, robotic systems. Uh, we have also energy, energy systems. So we try to make uh, uh, all the systems more efficient. And this is actually the radio systems uh, group to which I belong. Uh, and as well, the IC uh, design and uh, computer architectures, which is focused on hardware and the image and signal processing uh, uh, group that uh, focuses on, on, on biometrics. So the radio systems uh, is where Maxwell meets Shannon. They never be met before before 2020. But the, the idea is to, to do research uh, around the radio systems and more specifically antenna systems, radio propagation and channel modeling and signal processing. Uh, currently, uh, we, we have a, a, a group that is uh, comprised by two associate professors. I am one of them. The other one is the, our chair, Dr. Andre Kokel. Uh, we have three assistant professors, uh, uh, one uh, lecturer, uh, one guest assistant professor, and one guest researcher. So we have a faculty of uh, eight people. And currently, we have uh, 11 PhD students, and uh, three new will be uh, recruited uh, during uh, this year. We have been running 11 projects, uh, three European uh, projects, uh, <clears throat> one industry industry project, and two and seven Netherlands. Uh, uh, projects uh, uh, given by uh, granting organizations. So about uh, uh, about uh, or more than three million euros, we have been able to to recruit uh, in these uh, type of projects. Uh, within the radio systems, I'm leading the radio propagation antenna system lab, uh, since uh, which is currently comprises um, uh, six uh, PG students. You might recognize uh, Warren here, uh, which is an excellent uh, PhD student, as well as the, the others. And um, we, the group is comprised by uh, different nationalities, Malaysia, Iran, Netherlands, China, and uh, Sweden. 
and uh, uh, out of these uh, six PhD students, two of them are also uh, uh, with industry, which are part uh, of the of the European grants that we did good. We just funding, as I mentioned, the, one of the richest research funding is uh, the WaveCom project, uh, which involves the, the characterization and the antenna system development, as well as propagation and network optimization of the built environment uh, uh, scenarios. Uh, and also recently we got granted the, the 5BC, which is a, a, an also European uh, funded uh, project that uh, focuses on uh, telematic uh, applications. And uh, specifically, we will be uh, contributing with the antenna systems uh, development, uh, array antennas for both uh, communications and radar. And we have other projects uh, together with uh, Ericsson and Chalmers, uh, the OPA project and the CRC uh, scholarship student, Dan Wen. We have also uh, international collaboration funding in the East 3D MIMO project. So the focus of uh, our research is, is around the radio systems, I'm focusing on developing antenna systems, uh, investigation propagation channels, and OPA. Which I could talk a bit more in the in the uh, in the rest of the presentation. So the <clears throat> the focus of our lab is uh, multidisciplinary. Uh, we want to conduct research to advance applicable knowledge. Uh, for development of uh, new wireless communications and sensing, te sensing technologies. Uh, and we try to encompass electromagnetics, uh, communication theory, signal processing techniques. And we have three, three main research uh, teams here. So it's electromagnetic wave propagation and channel modeling, design of array antennas, phase arrays uh, for MIMO, matching MIMO, and OTA characterization of antenna uh, uh, systems and devices. We, of course, uh, have collaboration with industry, and in my case, especially still with the majority with the uh, Swedish industry, uh, basically because, well, uh, originally my contact after 25 years uh, working in, in, and studying in, 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 uh, in Sweden uh, is where you, you get the most the contacts. And uh, I'm really happy because uh, these are leading companies working in telecommunications, as Ericsson, Gapways, uh, developing uh, new antenna technologies, good tests at Ranlos, uh, who are uh, working in OTA. Uh, I'm collaborating a lot with uh, people uh, affiliated with Ramplan, wireless uh, uh, a company based in the UK and also in Sweden, as well as uh, Telenor in Norway and Televik in, in Belgium. So these are through the the, the the project that we have acquired in the last uh, uh, three years, but the new companies like Volkswagen and Bosch, uh, German companies and uh, Fivecom and, and Casa from Spain will also be joining uh, this uh, uh, all, all the collaborations in, in the area of antenna systems. So <clears throat> to give you the perspective of my last uh, 25 years uh, uh, research, uh, so I present here uh, research milestones. So I would say that I have uh, Conceptualize the defined device, uh, I would say, in other ways, fundamentally contributed uh, by myself or together with collaborators in, in these areas. In year 2000, uh, it was uh, put to the three, first 3G spatial channel model, which is a joint collaboration with the European Construction 259 and 3GBP at Ericsson. Uh, in 2004, uh, contributed to the, the first standard of the OTA characterization of wireless devices. Also, again, a collaboration between the EU Cost Action 273 and 3GBP, but now at Telia, Telia Sonora, an operator in Sweden. Uh, in 2009, I developed a general framework for the characterization of antennas and propagation channels interactions at the university as part of my PhD, research that I have been uh, pursuing also uh, since then. Uh, also, at, uh, at the same time, I, I derived physical limitation antennas in random propagation channels. Uh, by the spherical vector wave expansion of the magnetic field, which I also present a little bit, which uh, uh, touches upon the theme of uh, antenna channel interactions. In 2010, uh, massive MIMO channel measurements, basically one of the first, I would say, that were performed uh, together with Bloom University and the uh, University of Bedfordshire when I was uh, doing a postdoc there. And uh, also, the, one of the first, uh, basically, the first uh, virtual massive MIMO channel measurements in a reversion chamber. Uh, performed at the KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden. 
uh, in 2015, while well, at Chalmers, uh, we devised the idea of OT aided antenna design, where we want to use uh, system performance characterization like uh, MIMO throughput in order to improve uh, antenna design. Uh, also, the same year, we, we started looking to the, well, not standard, we, we also, uh, we developed the main, of, one of the main ideas behind the Randall Line of Sight LTA characterization method. And, uh, and we performed also the, the first uh, active uh, uh, OTA measurements on uh, of antennas on the vehicle. Uh, in 2017, uh, we uh, started working on uh, a new idea, uh, which is uh, basically the wireless building performance evaluation, uh, together with Ramplan uh, when I was at Chalmers, and we continue also when I was at uh, University of Twente. And uh, last year, we came up with the a new way of uh, doing OTA measurements that combines both uh, reverberation and anechoic chamber in one solution uh, and to generate the desired field. So uh, why is it important? Well, uh, probably I don't need to tell you why it's important, but uh, to work with uh, radius and uh, with antenna systems and propagation and OTA. But of course, uh, radius permeate all the aspects of our lives nowadays. We have vehicle communications, uh, we have autonomous vehicles, and uh, we need the radar technology. We have high throughput intelligent capacity uh, solar systems. Uh, we have uh, assisted living, the robots need to be able to uh, beha behave autonom autonomously and receive information from, from, the, uh, from the internet. We have industry 4.0 to improve uh, uh, production, and also uh, one aspect of this is digital twins. And of course, we have a smart living uh, where different devices will be interconnected uh, with each other. So the research area at large uh, of my group, again, uh, antenna system, propagation channels, and OTA, and uh, limited wave for random design, my antenna systems, fundamental limitations of antenna channel interactions, radio propagation channels, uh, wireless performance of buildings, and the OTA. And I will talk a bit more uh, in certain detail on these aspects uh, next. So propagation channels. Well, the wireless propagation channels is uh, one of the most important characteristics that you need to study, understand in order to design a wireless communication systems, and even to historically to to see how to improve uh, also antenna performance. Um, the main mechanism, of course, are well known, and the idea here is to sorry is to study how these different mechanisms will impact. Uh, uh, into the um, web propagation and depending on the application, uh, the frequency, the even the antenna types, uh, different mechanisms will be uh, prevailing over other mechanisms. So the idea is to, to understand how to better uh, analyze these uh, communication channels. Uh, traditionally, uh, communication channels is, uh, can be, uh, the narrow band communication channel can be characterized in in the receive signal in three, in three terms, the path loss, uh, the shadowing or, or uh, slow fading and the fast fading, uh, which is usually a Rayleigh or a Rishan. And this is of course a way to, to, to study these behaviors, but this behavior is just uh, uh, man-made, it's just a model. Uh, actually, everything has to do also with the antennas that you're using. So if you use directive antennas, most likely the, the pass variation will be, will be decreasing. And now, as we know, by using the massive micro antennas, such an effect of a, a channel hardening, this variation will be basically averaged out. So the most important aspects will be shadowing and path loss. And these things need to be understood and studied well in order to uh, uh, both design antenna systems and characterize them properly. And of course, to the frequency response, when you look into ultra wideband or wideband uh, response between transmit antenna, uh, antenna and receive antenna is of uh, high importance because uh, depending on the multipath richness, uh, you will have a, a more selective uh, channel uh, or not. And, and that also will impact uh, the, the type of antenna that you like to, to, to design that uh, should cover a certain uh, bandwidth and uh, have uh, one thing performance over the, the whole bandwidth. Uh, and this actually makes uh, the analysis uh, much complex because nowadays uh, we want to have uh, uh, also ultra wideband systems that uh, covers many, many bandwidths uh, or many, many frequency bands. And this is uh, quite challenging from, from the point of view of uh, uh, 
can have design as well. And uh, essentially, uh, all channels have uh, some sort of uh, spatial temporal behavior. Uh, here, I'm showing the, the power as a function of the time and the, the azimuth. And this is actually showing the power and the spectrum, how it changes as the user uh, moves uh, through the environment. As can you see, it can be a quite a changing environment. And uh, your antennas need to, to adapt to, to, this, uh, to this environment in a proper way by designing the, the, the actual uh, number of antenna elements that you have in your array, uh, how will be the beam scanning that you need to do. Uh, and this is a fundamental characteristics uh, of, of the propagation channels, and uh, especially for uh, MIMO and massive MIMO systems. And this propagation channel has a, a very well known characterization approach, which is the, which basically understanding the spatial properties where you transmit and uh, receive signals. And the spatial properties are characterized uh, best uh, and already started for, for quite a few years, uh, about 20 years. Uh, by the double directional representation of the channel. So basically is linking uh, the, the angle of uh, the departure of the transmitter with the angle of uh, arrival of the, of the receiver and vice versa. And uh, this is usually done by, by statistical methods, but uh, we, we understand that a lot of things need to be uh, uh, computed also. So we need to develop uh, uh, agile uh, prediction tools in order to compute uh, propagation. Uh, one of the applications that I've been looking into is industry 4.0. Uh, we use a point uh, cloud data to, of, um, of uh, uh, an environment where different machines will be operating. And this is, uh, this is an example of Chalmers. And from this uh, point cloud data, uh, a CAD model is, uh, is produced. And the CAD model also, <clears throat> uh, a simplified model can be produced in order to predict, uh, let's say, a signal. <clears throat> Sorry. A signal propagation in order to, to know where to place uh, the different uh, base stations in this uh, uh, workshop or factory environment in order to uh, maximize uh, the, the link quality, as uh, seen here. Uh, how this uh, uh, receive signal uh, will depend on the on the position on the distance in this environment. Another aspect uh, that we have been working on is uh, the implementation of machine learning uh, for angle of arrival estimation and uh, array antenna layout uh, design optimization. So, uh, well, as you know, the the estimation of angle of arrivals usually usually uses a, 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 some sort of array could be linear, planar, or circular. And uh, this is uh, quite uh, crucial for many applications. It could be also for, uh, it is for 5G and uh, beyond systems. And the idea of using a uh, neural network is to, to make uh, this characterization of uh, an estimation of the angle of arrival, arrivals independent of, of the channel conditions. And also to find out what uh, arrays will be optimal uh, uh, for certain scenarios. So by, by training, joint training of uh, the possible distribution of uh, angle of arrivals and uh, uh, define what will be the optimal uh, placement and uh, um, parameter solution or, or element, uh, element uh, choice and in, the, in general, in the end, what will be the design of uh, these antenna systems. Uh, we also have been working in uh, three-dimensional MIMO array antenna optimization for indoor small cells based on propagation channel predictions and channel modeling, where we use a, a prediction in propagation in environment, and we feed this information in order to understand what will be the, the, the required performance of the, the, the antenna systems in terms of uh, beam width, radiation patterns, uh, uh, number of antenna elements, and um, on antenna uh, um, element spacing. Uh, and also, of course, uh, using millimeter wave small cell deployment uh, in the build environments, and how these antennas will actually perform <clears throat> for different uh, uh, applications and environment as well. The research topics that we have been uh, working on are working on is the stochastic versus the music propagation channel modeling of multidimensional transfer functions, where frequency, time, polarization, position, and direction, and their bandwidth dependence. 
uh, characterization and prediction of web automatic uh, web, web propagation in various environments, outdoors, indoors, open spaces, workshops, etc. Uh, of course, we look into various applications such as traditional cellular communications, but also uh, automotive uh, communications and automotive radar, which is the, the latest project that we that we have. And of course, industry uh, 4.0 and the digital twins. We look into numerical computa computations, uh, academic ways, uh, automatic web propagation, uh, based on physical optics, uh, in front of diffraction and PPE, as well as others. And we want to impact, to study the impact of the human body on the propagation characteristics and actually uh, how the, the human body will impact the, the antenna performance. So, antenna channel interactions. Well, antenna channel interaction is another aspect. Uh, as we said, uh, Previously, uh, we need to know the channel, but uh, usually the channel is uh, uh, from the directional point of view, as I mentioned in the uh, representation. But antennas, they intrinsically they don't they don't they don't care about uh, direction. They or we say that uh, well they 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 do care about direction because you you will do do the, the deforming. But let's say for for certain smaller antennas uh, and antennas in general you can uh, you can expand the magnetic fields uh, uh, in in uh, in the series that will that will justify the the, the use of uh, of a certain mode or the, given the frequency and the electrical size of the antenna certain modes will be uh, excited uh, uh, potentially by this uh, by this volume or could be inside this volume so we basically, uh, what we did, or what we're doing is uh, use the spherical vector web expansion of the magnetic field uh, and using the, the solution to the Helmholtz uh, web equation, which is basically uh, these wave equations are derived from directly from Maxwell's uh, equations. And uh, the idea is to, to use a set of uh, orthogonal uh, wave functions that are um, uh, uh, Basically used to, to in the form of the Fourier and the Fourier series function, and by studying these coefficients a and b, we can actually describe the the, the whole field. This has been done uh, for antennas, but uh, uh, our idea for ten years ago, uh, together with uh, my supervisors in, in the university, was to use this to characterize also the the channel and to understand that that uh, for basically any point in space you could uh, Define what will be the the best uh, uh, antenna that you could uh, use, or what will be the characteristics in terms of relation patterns, and uh, also uh, bandwidth for this antenna. And the vector spherical harmonics uh, uh, are multipoles. It can be the, described as uh, the eight poles, quadrupoles, octopoles, and basically all fields. Uh, uh, any field can be is the, the the combination of all these functions. Which is basically an infinite series, and the truncation and the, which one are, are useful are defined by by the volume you're using here, yeah? uh, which is have a very direct uh, coping to what antennas can be can be used. And these dipole uh, modes are quite similar to traditional uh, uh, dipole uh, antennas in terms of the direction pattern. So uh, uh, the spherical vector wave expansion of the magnetic field uh, says that the, that the charge magnetic field can be expanded in spherical vector waves. Basically, in incoming waves A and outgoing uh, waves B, or actually these are the coefficients or the modes. So you can see, you can consider, uh, uh, you can consider an antenna and you can circumscribe it uh, by, by a sphere, the, the, the tight sphere. And basically, this sphere and the space outside, the going from this uh, the surface of the antenna of this uh, imaginary surface to infinity, will uh, define a spherical uh, wave guide or pulsating energy between infinity and the uh, and your sphere. And this is basically uh, can be there used to describe any any field distributions uh, that are radiated by these antennas or impinging at the antenna. <coughs> So B are basically uh, the incoming partial waves, and tau ML are the, the indices of these uh, uh, multipole components. 
uh, and uh, you are the outgoing uh, partial waves, I am here the corresponding uh, partial coefficients. So tau uh, corresponds to uh, uh, TMOs and tau2 uh, corresponds to TMOs. And then define the magnetic, uh, sorry, the magnetic, uh, used to define the magnetic uh, to, to poles. And tau2 is to, is used to identify the magnetic uh, to poles. And it's basically, is a, is a function of, of, of the space, so to speak, and the, how the, how the solution uh, satisfy the, the Maxwell's equations. But we also can, uh, in order to make the coupling to the antenna scattering matrix, to antennas, we need to consider the antenna scattering matrix. And the antennas can be then modeled as a waveguide junction with several ports, the local ports and the radiation ports. And the local ports are well communicated to, to guided waves, and the radiation ports are the, 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 the port that uh, uh, considers the, the waves impinging and radiating by, by the antenna. So basically, now when we have uh, uh, this antenna within this uh, sphere uh, uh, of minimum uh, area, we can uh, characterize all the characteristics of this antenna. Uh, and related to the fields, uh, uh, the field, the source free region. And this is done by this antenna scattering matrix. So basically, a total scattering matrix can be defined uh, in such a way that uh, constitutes the source scattering matrix representation of the exterior region to this sphere and uh, consists of a region of exterior to the spherical surfaces. And we characterize the antenna in terms of uh, uh, reflecting, uh, transmitting, uh, receiving, or scattering device by combining uh, the expansion coefficients of the, the, the local ports and the expansion coefficients of the, of the radiation ports. So based on that, we basically uh, uh, developed a, a formalism that we could expand, expand the, the electronic fields of the channel, giving a certain power angular spectrum, in this case as, as a function of the elevation and the, and the, the azimuth for different uh, type of or degrees of, uh, of uh, angular spread uh, in such a way that we could identify for this type of, of channels and also depending uh, on the cross-polar uh, ratio of the channel, it means that the, the ratio between the power in the vertical uh, domain to the power in the horizontal domain, which of these uh, uh, modes will be uh, excited the most. So here in the first row, I mean, this uh, in this figure, we show the, the power of the different uh, uh, multipoles and the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, actually uh, represent the, the dipole moments. And uh, in the horizontal direction, what we change is uh, the angular spread. And in the vertical direction, what we change is the cross-polar uh, ratio. So uh, when the, chi equal minus 10 dB, it means that uh, we have uh, a channel that has uh, predominantly horizontal polarization. And when it's uh, 10 dB, it's predominantly vertical polarization. And when it's 0 dB, it's quite balanced. And when we have sigma uh, 0.1 uh, radians, it means that you have a very narrow uh, channel. So most waves are coming from, from uh, almost the same direction. And as we increase it, so let's say to 10 degrees, we have a quite of a, a big uh, spread of, of waves. So they come from all possible directions. And in which way we can understand which antennas or which modes we need, uh, we should uh, excite in our antenna in order to communicate uh, better. And this can be extended for the MIMO case when you can have an expansion for this type of uh, the receiver antenna, the transmitter antenna. And you can see that depending on the actual uh, power angular spectrum uh, at the joint of power angular spectrum, uh, how these uh, different modes will be excited. So uh, let's say when you have a, a large angle spread, uh, we may have a quite a uniform distribution of the power uh, uh, exciting different mode is quite uh, intuitively quite understandable because it means that there is no direction that will be uh, uh, more uh, uh, preferable in space. So it's, it's mostly like having isotropic uh, channels. 
and they become quite uncorrelated. But to have a small angular spread, it means that you will have certain directions and therefore certain modes that will be excited more as compared to, to the more omnidirectional or isotropic case. And of course, the correlation will, will vary accordingly. And this can be, can be used in to design antenna diversity. Uh, here we show uh, the, uh, an array of uh, monopole antennas uh, uh, and their patterns and the corresponding uh, 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 minimum sphere uh, that will enclose these antennas. And here, uh, the measurement, of course, the, center, the phase center has been, has been uh, shifted and it corresponds to A. And you see that uh, many more modes are excited. Uh, and for B, we, we actually center the, the, the sphere to the phase center of the antenna, which means that uh, you have a fewer modes. And the same happens when you have only one element. So uh, also, if you consider translation, so there will be more modes, will be the center that you see uh, one dominant mode. And this actually gives you the idea that uh, is behind the diversity, uh, both uh, in polarization and spatial. So this basically translates to the, the actual richness uh, that a certain volume can, uh, can offer you in terms of uh, diversity. So the bigger the antenna, the more diversity you, you will have. So research topics here are antenna independent characterization of the propagation channel through the expansion coefficients of the surrounding field, uh, optimality conditions uh, 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 for multi-port uh, antennas in stochastic radio propagation channels, and physical limitations of antenna propagation channels, for instance, the mean effective gain to radiation quality of the antenna so ratios. And the, the also design of multiprobe uh, over their uh, uh, system for antenna characterization. So in terms of antenna systems, uh, we are interested, of course, in the relation pattern because it determines how the multipath components will interact uh, with antennas and uh, eventually uh, how much signal will be received, uh, signal power, also relation efficiency, and of course the bandwidth. Uh, so this is important to, to know to understand how many contiguous channels can be operated. And here, of course, we need to consider the, the, the actual design, the, the, the matching of the wave, so it's actually performance as, as the side of the, the bandwidth. Uh, for 5G, we don't only use a single antenna elements, we use a phase, ar phase arrays. A phase arrays is basically works as, as your ears. So the idea is to locate a certain direction of arrival of a wave. Yeah? And for that, you need to, to change the, the, the phase, but also you could actively change the, the amplitude uh, of the of the received signal and transmit signals in order to, to adapt to, to a certain uh, field impinging at your, at your antenna. And usual uh, requirements are that it should be, uh, I have a large bandwidth, uh, should have a wide angle scanning, compact and high gain. And as we know, these are uh, competing physical uh, limitations. So you cannot have everything at once, even if uh, the industry would like to have that. A lot of research is going to, to make uh, these kind of things to happen in the best way. And one way to make it happen is the ground point wavelength technology, which is basically something that we are currently uh, uh, collaborating or we're collaborating with the, uh, the Gap Waves, the company in, in Sweden. The Gap Waves is a, is a spin off of, the, of Chalmers University of Technology. And the main idea of, of, uh, of uh, Gap Wave technology is uh, uh, realizing uh, that uh, there will be no propagation if uh, uh, certain conditions are met uh, between uh, perfect uh, metal conductor and the perfect magnetic conductor. So if the, the length or the separation is, is, if it's due between these two parallel plates is less than uh, quarter lambda, there will be no propagation. However, by introducing uh, a strip, uh, you can suddenly uh, be able to, to allow propagation across this, uh, this uh, strip. And uh, the idea is to generate uh, this type of a uh, new type of uh, waveguide. Well, it has been working also for over 10 years, but the main type, three types are basically the risk gap waveguide, uh, and you can generate the quasi PMO propagation over the, of the reach. You also have the microchip gap waveguide, 
uh, and we come to have the, the group uh, Jaguar Drive. So the idea is to have no electrical contact between the two plates uh, by creating these sort of uh, metamaterial or periodic structures that uh, will uh, not allow for propagation in undecided directions. So why gap the wide technology? Well, millimeter wave uh, from technology from 30 to 300 gigahertz is being used for 5G and beyond. And uh, this frequency, high gain and high efficiency antennas are needed to maintain the link budget for the outdoor wireless systems, um, but also in other scenarios. Uh, and most of the high gain millimeter wave antennas are based on conventional wave guides, which need to, in, uh, to interface with the subsequent uh, radio frequency stages through mechanical structures, such as uh, wave uh, flanges. That may introduce additional losses and costs. The gap wave guide technology offers mechanically flexible wave structures and it also offers a good electrical contact between the waveguide layers. And losses are comparable to traditional uh, hollow uh, waveguides. Uh, so it offers quite a lot of uh, advantages. Of course, uh, research cannot be, and is not only uh, confined to this technology, but uh, it's a, with a good collaboration with, uh, with industry. And we have been producing quite a lot of antenna designs that will be uh, Published uh, soon, and the idea is to to provide or to show massive memory antenna performance and integration in in, in, in one in one solution, and also for fixed beam for for, for point to point uh, solutions, and the steering beams for uh, point to point solutions, and the the actual characterization of the special throughput to understand how good these antennas are in terms of uh, the, the spatial uh, three dimensional uh, beam forming, and also using uh, <clears throat> vertical polarization as well as uh, uh, polarization diversity to, in, to increase uh, uh, reliability. Uh, an idea uh, that we've been working on is uh, mentioned before is the OTA AD team of design. Where we define the new performance metrics against which we can validate the new antenna designs. For instance, we define the MIMO efficiency and uh, it's based on something that we developed uh, Chalmers uh, called the, called the probability of detection of uh, different B streams. And uh, he's uh, actually an example of uh, the first, second, and third antenna design that we have uh, iterated uh, through the evaluation of, uh, of this uh, uh, MIMO performance characterization. The, the, the first design is shown by the, the red line. And we discovered that the MIMO efficiency had actually quite a poor performance at, at some at some uh, some frequency, and we find out that uh, uh, by computing this uh, MIMO efficiency, uh, and we also saw that the, the reason for that is basically uh, that we have uh, unbalanced uh, polarizations and non-orthogonal patterns that make that your performance is not uh, optimal at this uh, at this uh, frequency and actually the, the grades. And this is something that we use in order to generate the second and, and third designs for uh, manufacturability uh, enhancement. The research topics that we're working on are MIMO antennas for sub six uh, gigahertz for communications and OTA systems, OTA eight antenna design, high gain fixed beam array antennas, uh, the millimeter wave for communications and OTA systems, phase arrays, uh, the medium wave for massive MIMO array applications. And uh, in this, we, we want to we work on the definition of relevant uh, array performance figures of merit. Uh, I think I, I hope I can uh, have some more time. <laughs> and here I want to talk about the over the characterization of antenna systems on wireless uh, devices. And uh, for those of you who are not uh, Familiar with this concept, the OTA stands for over there performance characterization of antennas, antenna systems, uh, wireless devices, including handhelds, wireless access points, base stations, cars, coffee makers, toasters. Anything that has an antenna uh, need to be tested and need to be characterized, need to be understood in terms of uh, uh, communication performance and also electronic performance. And the idea is to, to, to carry these measurements in laboratory conditions. Uh, that because you need uh, repeatable measurements, you need to cost-effective uh, uh, methodologies that can be translated to, to actual outdoor performance or performance for specific uh, applications. And the idea is that OTA enables the prediction 
a real life like a performance in wireless channels. And the, these OTA methodologies, uh, uh, different variations, need to be used also in, uh, in productions, in product certification by industry. They need to know that uh, their products actually they comply to uh, the standard specifications that are agreed by, by the community. Uh, antenna measurements, uh, one of the way of doing that is, 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 is performing the antennas in far field uh, uh, antenna ranges. As you know from antenna theory, you can divide this in the relative field in, in uh, roughly in three, uh, in three areas, the relative uh, near field that comes a lot to nearby structures, the radiative near field, the zone and the far field, the far hole for that for large antennas with larger dimension D will be given by this. So we were uh, these basic diameter of the minimum sphere enclosing the antenna and lambda will be the wavelength. So larger rays in massive MIMO require a large uh, antenna radius and also the higher frequencies maintain the uh, size. And also uh, these antennas uh, or antennas in general, uh, as we mentioned before, need to be operated in complex environments. So we need to be able to not only have uh, very compact ranges, but also be able to, to generate uh, and emulate different channels. So for these uh, purposes, uh, there are a lot of uh, OTA systems. Uh, far to the, to the left, uh, we have the, uh, the reaching chamber, which basically recreates the ring uh, channel, the, the rich isotropic channel, multiple channels which basically is an uh, isotropic on average. On the other extreme, we have the random random side or plain wave generator systems, which can be deployed in semi aquatic uh, uh, chambers or in aquatic chambers. And the idea is to generate a single or, or a maximum uh, two uh, tonal polarized waves and can be uh, used for different uh, applications for automotive and also uh, measuring uh, radiation patterns and film patterns. But as we mentioned, the, the actual channel uh, I mean, the real channel is uh, more complex, it's something in between. And for this, uh, traditionally, uh, a lot of systems that have been uh, quite popular are the multi probe antenna systems, which are deployed in echoic chambers. And actually, the, the waves, and as opposite to the radio chambers, are generated by, by directive uh, antennas or by generating uh, combining fields in a certain uh, test, test zone. But we understand that uh, this two-dimensional structure is not capable of uh, uh, providing us with the environment for the 3D characterization of antennas. So we need to do something else, something more. And we, a few years ago, we realized that uh, in a reversion chamber, uh, uh, we could generate uh, different uh, uh, fields and uh, distributions uh, in, in space. And this uh, has been done, uh, let's say we put a uh, uh, bow tie antenna on, on this, uh, uh, on, this uh, on this line and we moved ar around and by combining the direction of the, of the periodic antenna and the use of absorbers, we could change the statistics of the channels along these uh, positions. Uh, and also we, we understood that, okay, we are also able, capable to to generate different uh, uh, multi-path components, different um, different uh, different compositions of fields at different positions in space, and that led us to to the together with the Chalmers to the new concept, the hybrid OTA chamber, which is basically a multi-path and plane generator in one. And here we, instead of having a full uh, variation chamber, we use a waveguide. Uh, and the, at the end of the wave guide, we, we put absorbers and also in what end we, we put the plane wave generator uh, array. And at the other end, we put the device on the test, could be also a phase array or, on the, or the antenna or base station. And the idea is to be able to, to, to generate uh, fields incoming from different directions in space at the DUT position as shown to the, to the right. The, the idea is to generate a three-dimensional rich and field distribution. And of course, to that, we need to understand the environment and we need to optimize the chamber array antennas in terms of uh, elements and, uh, and size and, and, and so on. Uh, 
I think that I will talk very little about this, but the idea is to, to be able to, at the receiver position, uh, understand what will be the coupling between the transmitter element and the, and the, and the space or the position on the plane, it could be also volume, uh, uh, how and also how we should excite this uh, uh, plane wave generator or chamber antenna in order to, to, to get the desired field. And this, of course, need to be done by, by, by if you want to do simulations by, by computational methods and uh, also could do in practice by, by measurements, by scanning the field in the, on the other end. Uh, <clears throat> and we, we characterize this uh, for a very simple MIMO channel model uh, where we use the region distribution and the specific, specifically the, the decay factor, which is the ratio of the dominant field component a single plane wave to the power of the scatter field component, in this case, the hemispherical rim. And we consider by, by changing or by adjusting the, the, the power of the generated uh, direct component or single plane wave and, uh, and the other scatter field, we can generate different k factors and different channels. The single, single plane wave is basically uh, corresponds to k factor equal going to infinity, and the hemispherical rim is, uh, has a k factor equal zero. Uh, which is basically really channel, and uh, we can also be able to generate uh, things in between the two. Uh, here I show uh, a little bit uh, about the, how we do it. And the dot, uh, the red dots, shows the the positions of a of a phase uh, or an array, phase array that we we, we use uh, for our chamber antenna, and then the, the blue grid is the point uh, shows the, the, the points where we compute the, the field or we could also measure the field uh, and the DUT position. And the green one uh, actually shows um, the, the area where we want to generate the desired field. So the idea is to, to find out what are the, the, the proper uh, weights of um, our phase array that will generate the desired statistics in this uh, green area. Uh, and I think uh, I will just uh, go further because you can find this in the papers that have been published or will be published soon. And I will show the results. And the, and the results here show the special region distributed field. The first uh, row shows the amplitude distribution, and the second row shows the phase. And uh, the vertical we show for the k, k equals zero, which is basically a Rayleigh or multipath fading channel. And then we increase the k factor until we have, uh, or assume that we have an infinite k factor, which is basically generating a single plane wave. So we basically have demonstrated that it's possible to generate this type of uh, channels in, in in the same environment by using uh, proper uh, beamforming uh, techniques. Here I'm showing a, a simulation. I mean, this work has been joined together with the Chalmers University Technology and the Blue Test has been found by, by Ericsson. And he can here to the left, we show the, <coughs> the situation. We have the Rayleigh channel. We have many uh, different uh, uh, waves of the same amplitudes coming from different directions, shown here, the six different directions. And to the right, we have uh, one dominating wave, and the other five waves are, are coming from other directions, but have a much lesser amplitude. And you can see how how, how the field, the amplitude distribution of the field and the phase uh, change accordingly uh, to the desired uh, and distribution. And then we have built this, uh, this chamber and there's a lot of uh, research ongoing now that we will produce in, uh, and publish in the, in the near future. And uh, we've shown that, uh, that this has rather good repeatability. Here I show the amplitude that has been measured in this chamber and the, the, the phase and uh, for different uh, 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 situations when we have uh, repeated the measurements we see that uh, the sigma the two sigma amplitude variations and or the I mean the two sigma for uh, two standard deviations for the amplitude and, and the phase we see that for the for the amplitude this is, is quite small between zero and 1.5 and for for the phase is also quite good. So repeatability, repeatability it seems to be working a lot. 
and we are we are we have been uh, working uh, a lot on this uh, in this area. The research topics here are uh, in OTA as a multi probe antenna systems, random site, vibration chambers, the hybrid, and the quality vibration chamber hark, and the focus on the emulation of the desired physical preparation environment, measurement accuracy of relevant figure of merit in the test zone, and the channels that will follow different statistics uh, can be generated in, in space and direction. And of course, this is uh, be done to test the communications and radar applications. So we are designing uh, arrays that will uh, test phase arrays for communication and radio applications, and also to test multiple user equipments and different scenarios and testing interference. So uh, the last one is the building wireless performance. Uh, uh, I know probably a few minutes if you allow me. Uh, and the idea here is to, to define the building wireless performance. And the building wireless performance is, a, is an intrinsic property of a building. It should be independent of any wireless technology that is implemented uh, or deployed in that, in that specific environment. And the building wireless performance metric describes the change of the coverage and capacity. That's it, the coverage gain and capacity gain define the relative free space in order to address the key difference between a built environment, which means that the presence of, uh, of walls, uh, ceiling, uh, windows, uh, and perhaps also furniture and so on, as compared to the free space. And uh, the assumptions made in this study that we have infinitely dense small cell network, and of course, uh, uh, we exploit the, the channel hardening property of the massive MIMO as the number of antennas goes to infinity, which is a theoretical uh, uh, approach, but actually makes us or allows us to, to be quite independent from, from the channel or from the type of uh, uh, wireless system that has been deployed. And why we're doing that? Well, uh, over 80% of wireless traffic already takes place indoors. Uh, I mean, we have safety, insulation, day lighting, uh, as uh, uh, fundamental activity of, of, uh, of buildings. So wireless communication is becoming one of the, the most fundamental utilities of buildings uh, due to also energy consumption and, and, and having a green wireless networks. It is well known that building structures have a significant impact on building wireless networks. And if we seek to achieve the optimal network performance indoors, the building should be designed with objective of maximizing wireless performance. The main objective is to handle to enable the quantitative analysis of the effects of building structures on the indoor network performance by architects and civil engineers. We want to allow already at the, at the design phase of a building to, to provide an intrinsic uh, wireless performance that can be uh, guaranteed uh, by, by design of this, uh, of this environment. Uh, the main metrics that we have uh, developed so far are the power gain and the interface gain. It's basically a gain that you will get uh, by introducing uh, certain uh, walls or geometries of uh, environments and uh, how that will impact uh, propagation and interference of uh, the desired uh, signals and non-desired signals uh, due to the, the, the electromagnetic wave propagation in these environments. And uh, the idea is to use this, uh, these two parameters, the power gain and interference gain and their product as an intrinsic property of, of, uh, of the environment that can be used by, by architects and civil engineers in order to design uh, uh, the buildings. Here we, we show uh, some uh, results. Of course, these are more or less quite uh, idealistic results, but uh, we, we show the aspect ratio impact, which is basically the, the ratio of the length to the, to the, to the side of the, of, the, of the room on how the uh, interference, uh, uh, the gain interference will like, uh, will, will depend on this aspect ratio and also at different frequencies. And you see that will change a lot actually because of the, the interaction of uh, uh, electromagnetic waves with the materials at different frequencies and also the, the, at, at lower frequencies as well for the desired uh, uh, signals. The research topics are impact of electric properties of building materials, design of building materials to enhance desired propagation and suppression of undesired propagation, as, frequency, as a function of frequency, bandwidth, directionality, 
for instance, by means of uh, figure insulative surfaces and metamaterials, and definition of figure of night for wild building performance. Uh, well, this is this finalizes my my presentation. Uh, this is just a summary of uh, what I presented, and also I would like to acknowledge uh, the European Union, uh, more specifically Horizon 2020, my school also for the actions for supporting our research, as well as the Eurostars program of the Eureka Network, and the Swedish uh, DINOVA, the Swedish Innovation Aid Agency, and of course the collaboration uh, with the University of Sheffield. And Chambers University of Technology and uh, companies like Upwaves, Ericsson, Bluetest, Ramos, and of course all my students and collaborators. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Andreas, for a very interesting and insightful talk. I think uh, it's actually relatively very new to me. I mean, this research area, especially for the building part. Uh, anyway, uh, I would like to open questions to the audience. Uh, if you shy to, to ask questions, probably you can type down in the chat box area, so then I can read for you. And then, uh, well, maybe we can see if there is any question. Um, well, anyway, um, pr probably I can start first, eh? and this. <laughs> just to spark the, um, the, the audience. Uh, you, you, you mentioned something about the uh, MIMO efficiency. Uh, yeah. And, and then you, you make comparison, uh, I mean, several antennas, and then uh, um, uh, can you give some, some, some uh, idea about that, how you calculate and, and how, how it works, actually? Yes. Uh, well, the idea, as I mentioned before, since uh, you have uh, in, uh, in now in MIMO, massive MIMO systems, you will not have uh, uh, so much uh, access to any testing port. Uh, let's say at the base station, uh, you will be interested in understanding how is actually the the overall system performance. Yeah, and for that you need to to some let's say you need to focus on on system characteristics or system figure of merit. And one figure of merit that uh, among many others, I mean, you have the total relative power, you have the 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 ERP, you have uh, the side load levels, so you have uh, a lot of things, yeah? But uh, one thing could be in the end, let's say for the user and in certain direction, is the throughput that you are able to, to provide the, to this user, yeah? So the idea is to, to use this throughput through a, a simple model, or could be also an advanced model of the, of the system uh, in which you can characterize how the, this antenna can uh, leverage, can create these different uh, these streams, yeah? Making mm -hmm. simplified assumptions, or if you want, I mean, you can make the complex as, 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 as the, the, the model as complex as you, as you wish. But the idea is to be able to say, okay, for this antenna design that has so many ports, yeah? Uh, how many, what is the, does it actually uh, leverages the, the, or delivers the, the, the number of bit streams that, uh, that we are supposed to, to, to expect for this uh, specific application. And uh, this actually relates in the model, the antenna characteristics, I mean, the, the relation pattern, the, the, the embedded relation patterns, and it takes into account the, the, the coupling per se and so on, and how that will impact this uh, performance. Yes, so you can directly see and study how the antenna characteristics will, uh, uh, interact with the with the with the with the channel to produce this uh, this desired the bit streams. Mm, okay. Can, can, does it help you in anything? Yeah. I mean, yeah. See, I mean the, the idea is to to go from from more just looking to more traditional uh, antenna characteristics, and it doesn't mean that you shouldn't look at them. Yeah. You of course need to in order to be able to design antennas, you have to look into traditional. Uh, True. Characteristics. However, it's not enough, yeah, because of the type of test that you are going to do, and also be, because you will need to understand in the end how these antennas will operate in the actual channel, yeah, because antennas in most cases are not operated in free space. You have a, you have, they communicate uh, I mean, to, with each other over a channel, so you need to incorporate the channel characteristics in order to 
to be able to to draw conclusions about how to optimize this antenna. Okay, but 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 that efficiency is uh, is uh, from the antenna point of view only. Is that what you mean? I mean, no, do you? Sorry, is 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 it already includes the 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 whatever performance of the antenna has? I mean, the, the okay. embedded efficiency of the antenna elements and so on. It's already there. Yeah, mm. but it's a it's a it's not. Uh, explicitly spelled out. I mean, when you, let's say, when you have an array, you can characterize mm -hmm. by terminating, uh, uh, I mean, by considering the, the embedded uh, performance of an antenna element, you can mm -hmm. terminate all the other antenna elements, yeah, and do that for each of them, yeah? Yeah. And from that, you could characterize the, 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 the overall performance. So this, these characteristics are already there in this, in this uh, figure of merit. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, we have one question here. Uh, massive MIMO can be used only for backhauling or it can be used in other way? Uh, I think that uh, the idea is to use that for uh, not only for backhauling. The idea is to be able to, to have these uh, uh, point to multi point applications when you, you're able to, to have the, the, the special uh, division multiplexing access. Uh, and of course, it's a challenge to to, to have a social functional uh, antennas, but this uh, the idea of uh, of uh, massive MIMO is to be able to use uh, not only for backhauling but also for uh, uh, multi-user application because it's the the main idea behind of uh, massive MIMO is the, the the ability of separating these different users, especially in order to to reduce interference between the different users and uh, being able to to use the same uh, resource over the, the whole bandwidth uh, uh, for all the users at the same time. Mm. Okay. Uh, next question. Yeah, we can. I think we can uh, receive one or two more questions. Uh, as you mentioned, in power gain and interference gain, the signal power from inbuilt scenario and out of space, the same antenna will be used or different at different location. Uh, if I understood it uh, correctly, yeah. the question, I mean, the idea is to relate, uh, you need to, I mean, in order to, in engineering, you need to define performance uh, uh, relative to some reference, yeah? And uh, the simplest reference that you have that is well-defined is the free space, yeah? So the, the idea is to, to have the same scenario, assuming that you have a, uh, the same type of antennas or same uh, distributions or coverage or whatsoever, but not, not the same coverage, but the, the coverage that you will get uh, with, uh, with uh, antennas in free space and the same antennas in, in building scenarios, how that will be impacted by, by the building structures. Of course, when you understand that and you understand how the mechanisms and how you can improve this performance, you will automatically try to, to improve again uh, antennas yeah that you would deploy in, in, a, in, a, in a building but the idea is to initially get a measure just based on only on the the geometry and electrical parameters of, 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 uh, of a room of a building on how that will impact uh, the wave propagation as a, some sort of a zeroth order uh, iteration in the next, uh, uh, as, as we uh, as we advance our knowledge, we will uh, we will incorporate, uh, of course, any type of, of antennas and to understand how that will actually can be used uh, in order to improve the the building uh, uh, wireless performance. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there any workshop for massive MIMO antenna design? <laughs> Uh, well, we, we, we will try to, to organize something in the future. I mean, mm. I that it would be great. To, to okay, it. okay, that's good. Okay, maybe one more question, last question. Uh, if not, I, I have one, well, probably last uh, question to you. Um, do you have any idea on the um, antenna system for I mean that that should work well in 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 a complex environment, for example, like um, 
uh, in industry, for example, there are so many machine and, and, and a lot of interference and things like that. So that might be uh, the system itself would be a bit different compared to conventional uh, terminal antennas, for example. So um, um, will it be something like uh, it should be like uh, in omnidirectional pattern or I mean, how, how does that impact, for example, number of antenna elements, you know, and then, and then things like that? Well, that is a really good question. That's part of uh, the research, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's something that we would like to find out ourselves. And of course, I mean, uh, the, the, the simplest uh, approach is to, to at least uh, uh, provide uh, the desired coverage and, and, and performance uh, in terms of uh, throughput and, and delay or uh, latency and so on. Yeah. based on the simplest, uh, uh, the most cost-effective solutions. True. But of course, that, that, will, that, will, be, that will depend on, 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 the, on what the industry is, uh, is prepared yeah. to, to invest. Yeah? <clears throat> Maybe for some specific, very high, high uh, I mean, uh, when the requirement is, is are, are higher, you will need to, to, to really develop uh, uh, systems that are tailored to, to generate, uh, I mean, uh, a beam that towards the, 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 the direction that you want and be able to suppress all possible interference, yeah? But this is something that is, is part of the research, yeah? Because as you said, mm -hmm. the, the, the industrial environment is very complex and uh, having, having that, I mean, having a very, uh, optimal antennas in terms of uh, uh, their activity can be a challenge. So in the end, perhaps the, the best you could do in a reasonable way, cost-effective way could be just the, the omnidirectional antennas anyway and do some sure. similar processing for that. Yeah. So mm. it's, it's, it's part of the research, yeah. But it's mm. a good question. Yeah, true, thanks. Maybe, maybe last question, uh, but one. Uh, currently, we already use Wi-Fi survey software to optimize antenna placement. So, how this research improve that? Well, uh, usually uh, companies like uh, Ericsson and uh, the major telecom vendors they they always uh, uh, try to sell the newest technology as as. Uh, <clears throat> As the displacement or as a as an alternative to, to Wi-Fi, <laughs> so uh, these kind of things. I mean, uh, I mean the different technologies and different uh, operations will be merging. You also see, I mean, for nano nano cellular, cellular networks, it's more much closer to Wi-Fi type of uh, uh, deployment. Yeah, so the optimization will be just depend on the, on the type of uh, application, specific application that you, you, you will look at. Yeah? So it's something that uh, needs to be taken into, into account for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I think, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think we reached the end of the session. Uh, I really hope that the all participants uh, enjoyed uh, this session from Professor Andy and then uh, uh, if possible, everybody can switch on the camera so then we can we can uh, you can take a group photo or desktop photo. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Well, I'm really happy that you invited me. I mean, it's uh, it's great to to be yeah here to, yeah great to present. So yes, thank you very much. Okay, not many. Well, the some of them switch on so if i can get few more that can switch on the camera and then uh, yeah so these are quite uh, familiar faces actually and <laughs> professor ramli over there thank you thanks for joining dr imran and and and, and others. okay okay um yeah take picture one two dr sai someone is taking the picture Yes, doctor, I'm taking the picture. Okay, okay, all right, okay, thanks, okay, thanks, okay. Okay, can you please count? Okay, everyone, one, two, three.
Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Andres. Hope to see you sometime in the near future. If not in conference, maybe we can keep in touch in in uh, in LinkedIn and others. Thank you very much again. Thanks. Have a good day. All right. Thanks.